All right, now on to program number four. This is just a slight difference from number three, where we we'll actually have the user put some input values. So the times table to do, uh, the starting value and the ending value, where the starting is less than or equal to the ending value. So it looks like uh, we just need to make some minor modifications to number three, and we're gonna borrow the input code from our previous assignments. So let's take a look at the code here. So we, it was called seven times, but let's change this to be called times table um, and we'll notice we want a table number and a low and a high well we could just now instead of having these as local variables these are going to become parameters so we're going to go or table number from the low to the high not static values that we were playing with before so we'll just change that so now we should be doing the same we're seeing the times table for that and then we're going from the low to the high and we're printing everything else should work just great but now we need to um, parameterize this and call it from below so I'm going to say we're going to call seven times from table low to high the trick is we need to actually ask for these values now I'm going to go back and look at program number one and then we can just steal this code so we had low and high and we looped until the low and high were set right. So it looks like I'll just put that. We got a low, enter the smaller value. Is that what it says? Enter the starting value. So I'll just make it look a little bit cleaner. Clean up the code. Uh, the output starting value, and then it says enter the ending value. So we were uh, like this. The ending value. That looks nice. Some space there, and then we'll just uh, copy paste that. Oh, yeah, that's what we want. And then we'll just uh, please enter a higher value for the ending number. And we'll use high, low, but we're missing the table. So I'll just copy paste this out, and we'll say the table is. Uh, Enter the time table to print. Yeah. Of course, my grammar wasn't quite right there, but enter the times table to print would be a nicer way to say that. And I'll put a little space there. I like to put a space at the end of all my inputs, so it looks a little nice. And I made a bunch of changes there. Well, let's see how it works. And it's freaking out. Oh, I saved it on top of my old program three. That was kind of dumb, Ken. I will save this as program 4. And don't do this at home. I lost my old version 3, but I should have a backup there. I'll fix it here in a second. I'll do it right now, actually. Pi. 3.pi. 3.pi. Alright, so it's called program 4.pi. Let's run program 4.pi. Enter the times table to print. Let's do the 8 times table. Let's go from 1 to 5. And we have a problem here. Name seven times is not defined. What the heck? Oh, because I changed the name of my function to be called times table, didn't I? Ah, there we go. What happens when you don't have coffee when you're programming? We're going to go from eight times table from one to five. One times eight, two times eight, three times eight, four times eight, five times eight. Looks good to me. And uh, we're done for this one.